So you might be wondering why there's no toilet. In my apartment tour video, I had said I would go into more detail about the bathroom in a separate video. So this is the bathroom tour. We'll start with the sink first. You can adjust hot or cold water and you can also change it to a shower setting. It comes with a stopper so you can fill this sink if you need to for whatever reason and it does come with a bit of storage on the sides there's a little cabinet under the sink beside the sink there's a vacuum cleaner that also came with the apartment and then we have the washing machine not a washer dryer it only washes when you put your load of laundry in this washing machine it kind of spins a little to check the weight and then it will determine how much water to use from the weight of the laundry i leave it on the standard setting and i let it do its thing so all i have to do is turn it on and start it beside the washing machine i have my laundry basket and just some general storage on the other side is the shower so this is what it looks like in here So this room is essentially completely waterproof and you would shower in this area and have a bath in that area. The shower can be set lower or higher depending on what you're doing and how you want to show up. In Japan it's common to wash while sitting down so that stool and bucket came with the apartment. Right outside is this keypad. The apartment also came with a bit of translation or explanation. The keypad controls this vent. You can use that vent to dry clothes. It can act as a heater. It can act as just a fan to cool you off and it can be used for ventilation. This here would control the timing of each of those things and you can set it in terms of strength and this is 24 hour ventilation. I guess if the door of the bathroom is open, it would ventilate the entire apartment. That would help dehumidify and prevent mold. When using the clothes drying setting, you would hang your clothes on this bar and just close the door and let it do its thing. There's a pipe that can swing from the tub to the shower area, cold, hot. This switches the water from the shower head or the pipe. So there's another keypad over the bathtub. This one controls the bathtub and all the settings related to the tub. This is a call button, so there is another keypad in the kitchen and pressing that button would call the other keypad. It would just make the other keypad essentially ring whether it's an emergency or you just want them to bring something for you someone outside the bathroom can know that you're calling them the next button below it is priority um i'm not sure how to really explain this one but basically if i press this button in here then this keypad would be the primary keypad and if i press that button in the kitchen the kitchen keypad would be the primary keypad next over here is autofill and that fills the bathtub to the settings that you had preset so that would include the level of the water, the temperature of the water, etc. You can just press that button and it will fill it to those automatic settings. This button is to reheat the bath water. So if the bathtub is already filled and some time has passed and you want to reheat it to the temperature that you had preset, you can press that button. This is the on off button. This button, that is to make the bath water cooler. So it will just add more cold water. This one will add more hot water. This one is to adjust the volume of water in the bath. This adjusts the volume of the voice because this keypad also speaks. This is save. This is to set the temperature of the bath water. This is to maintain the temperature of the bath water for a certain time. This is the only button for which I have no idea what it does. It says Yuragi no Shawa. I can read it, but I don't know what that means. When I look it up, I get that it says fluctuation shower, but 
what does that mean? I still don't know what that button does. If anyone knows what that button is and what it does, please share in the comments because when I look it up, I really get nothing, like I can't find an explanation. So please let me know in the comments below. So the filling of the bath is not controlled by this pipe here. You can fill the bath with that pipe, but it's filled from there. So this ejects water based on the settings on the keypad. When you're ready to fill the bath, you would just put this stopper in. This bathtub may seem short to some people, but it's the perfect size for me and it's much deeper than any bathtub I've ever experienced. This is how deep it is. If it's filled to my preferred level, it will cover everything. I like that the walls are so vertical. It doesn't feel like I'm always slipping down into the bath, which is something I felt in Western bathtubs. And this just feels very comfortable to me. This is the kitchen keypad and it has some of the same buttons. There's also this light and it controls these and there's also an outlet which I have never used. Everything I use in the shower is stored in the shower. This mirror is not that great. There are often anti-fog mirrors, but I don't think this one is. I'm sure this is just a regular mirror. Every time I'm in here, it fogs up immediately and becomes completely useless. Just outside the bathroom, you have the light switch and 24 hour ventilation, which I pretty much leave on all the time. So you might be wondering why there's no toilet. Well, in Japan, there are two common styles of bathrooms and you can pretty much get a place where everything is in one room or you can get a place where you have what I've shown you so far in one room and the toilet is by itself in a separate room and that's how this apartment is. So I'll show you the toilet and roughly how far away it is from this room. This is me walking to the toilet. This is where it is. So it's not that far, the apartment is really small but it is not in the bathroom. So this is literally just a tiny room with only the toilet. As soon as you enter, there's the light switch and again 24 hour ventilation. Over here is just the toilet paper, it holds two rolls and this is a hand wash. As for this sink, whenever you flush the toilet, the clean water comes out of this pipe and you can just wash your hands while it's going down this drain to fill up the tank. You can't just turn on this pipe and turn it off. It only turns on when you flush the toilet. So you can turn this level down for a small flush or you can lift it for a big flush. And these are the other settings and features of the toilet. So these are the bidet settings. This would be for the front and this would be for the back. This is the stop button. It just stops either of these features down here controls the intensity of the water and over here you have the temperature setting so this is higher temperature lower temperature this would be to set the temperature of the toilet seat which is heated and this is to set the temperature of the water coming from the bidet you can let the toilet seat be heated all the time or you can use these energy saving settings over here so that the heating turns on at a certain time and turns off at a certain time. The water is not as far up as in some Western countries. There's a window in here as well. It's frosted glass, however, that's a wall. When the toilet is in the bathroom in Japan, the setup is a bit close. I'll insert a picture. And I actually don't really understand this setup because based on the setup of my bathroom, I'm wondering where you would stand to shower if the toilet was in the shower area. Does that mean you would just stand in the tub and shower? I'm not really sure, but thinking about that, I much prefer this setup. That's pretty much it for this tour. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, if you know what fluctuation shower means, please comment below and let me know.